Bella Goth The biggest mystery in the history of The Sims. Probably one of the biggest mysteries of the gaming world in general. It's been almost 16 years since The Sims 2 came out and people are still speculating. Forum posts, blog posts, videos... And we still don't know what really happened to her. Or do we? Personally, I'm not really a fan of all that guesswork around the story of Bella, but I'm very much into thinking about the technical side of things, so what the developers actually had in mind based on some facts seen in the game. And yes, there's a difference. A big one. So if you'd like to hear my thoughts on it, also including some trivia about other sims, plus a long talk about the beta version of the game, because somehow I connected it to the Bella story, stay with me. So first, basics. In The Sims 2, Bella had been abducted by aliens and never returned. There's a suggestion that the Caliente sisters might have had something to do with it as they moved to Pleasant View right before this event, plus you can find an alien ancestor in their family tree, and Dina wants Mortimer's fortune after her husband died. Her husband who coincidentally happened to be Bella's brother. Hmm. Also, Don Lothario is kind of involved too, because it's said that Bella was last seen on the roof of his house, so supposedly that's where she got abducted. That's the general idea for the story. So, there are a lot of small details that players tend to treat as clues of what happened before Bella disappeared. Let's analyze those things according to the game mechanics, shall we? Okay, from the beginning. In a normal gameplay, it's not possible for aliens to never bring the sim back. So this mere fact is odd enough. But Bella is visible in the game, we can see her in the family tree. So on the technical side, she's a hidden NPC. In Sim PE, she's in the same category as the Grim Reaper, Therapist, etc. and Dead Sims. Those are the sims that can't just be randomly spawned anywhere, because that wouldn't make much sense. Like, you know, in The Sims 4 you can run into the Grim Reaper in a bar or on vacation. It doesn't happen in The Sims 2. From game's perspective, Bella is treated as deceased because she has the I am dead token. But she's not fully dead as she is not grayed out in the family tree. That was needed for the story where her death was never confirmed because that is the mystery. So we can easily remove the dead token, spawn her in the game using cheats, and then she becomes playable, like a normal regular sim. When you do that, you may have a lot of questions about what you see. Let me answer them for you. Bella recognizes her children as family, but has a mediocre relationship with Mortimer. Why? When you add her to the goth household, she gets the default relationship with all the members, just as if she moved in. She knows her children are her family because she's connected to them by the family tree. And she might have a slightly better relationship with them than Mortimer because they are her family. She's not connected to Mortimer because they aren't married anymore. That's what the dead token is for. Not only so that she doesn't randomly appear on a community lot, which would just be super weird, but also for Mortimer to be able to move on and marry Dina so she can have all that cash. You know what I mean? Why can Dina get married then, if she's still connected to Michael Bachelor in the tree? It might be a glitch. Especially that even if Dina marries Mortimer and then adopts a child after his death, this child will be hers and Michael's, according to the family tree. I had that happen and it's kind of spooky. But the game doesn't fully consider him her husband because not only can she remarry, simply, there's no problem with that, but also if you resurrect Michael, they will treat each other as family but not as spouses, so they can't do anything romantic. It's really strange, but I think he's still in her family tree to make it very clear that they were married before he died, as they don't have any children to connect them in the tree. And it was probably important for the story to show that Dina is, well, kind of a gold digger, right? Why is Mortimer happy about Bella's abduction? Is he a psychopath? Nah, he's just a knowledge sim. That's how they work. The creators could have changed the color of this memory for Mortimer, but then it would look weird if other knowledge sims suddenly have it green, because that's normal for this aspiration. It wouldn't be very consistent. Plus, have you ever looked into memories in River Blossom Hills? They are all green, even if someone's parents died. Okay, bye mom. Why does Bella have such poor chemistry with Mortimer? 
Because chemistry didn't exist in the base game. Maxis probably didn't even know they would add it later on, so this wasn't something to predict. And it turns out that the knowledge and romance aspirations are not very compatible. They get negative points of attraction. And there are many more factors to it, like turn-ons and turn-offs, obviously, but also personality points, zodiac signs, and how good the relationship is. That also counts. It definitely wasn't something the developers intended, so there's no reason to search for any storytelling clues in this area. Why is she so young? She is younger than her daughter, that's true. Because when you remove the dead token, it's kind of like you've resurrected her. Always when a sim gets resurrected, they're at the beginning of their current life stage, even if that wasn't the elder life stage. And I know resurrection came in university, it wasn't available in the base game, but I'm assuming it uses a similar system, it just makes sense to me. It's kind of like the age resets once the sim dies. Why is her memory wiped out? I think that's like a crucial part of the storytelling, right? that the aliens wiped out her memory, she doesn't recognize her family fully, stuff like that. But she doesn't have any memories because she's a hidden NPC, as I mentioned. Townies don't have memories either. Even if you affect their lives somehow at the time they're not playable yet, like have the first kiss with a townie, for example, it won't save as a memory for that townie. They can only gather memories when they move in. Why is Bella's personality empty? That I don't really know. But she's a hidden sim, so I guess we could give her the right to be incomplete? That's definitely something that they screwed up. And I know what you want to say right now. That Bella was accidentally deleted by Maxis and that's why they came up with the story in the first place. I call bullcrap. First of all, do you know what happens when a sim is deleted from the game completely? I'll show you. They disappear from the family tree. All the memories that used to be about this sim are now about Simolian Subject. That sounds like a pretty good name idea for Nervous' child. Huh. Not to mention that if you delete sims, your neighborhood will just corrupt at some point. And Bella is still visible in the game, she's just not playable by default. And if you'd like to argue that maybe she was only partially deleted, I'll say that it's a, a bit too easy to bring her back for this to be true. She still has a lot of data and it's really easy to just restore her. And all we have is SimPE that was fan-made and obviously not as advanced as whatever the programmers were using to create the entire game. If they had made a mistake like that, they could have fixed it within a few moves. Also, why would she have the dead token if she had been deleted by accident? Ever thought of that? It had to be the plan. It had to be intended for her to be missing. I have a whole theory of why they decided to make Bella disappear, but that will come at the end of this video when I sum it all up. Now let's have a look at the strange town Bella. There she's just a regular townie, so you can easily see her at a random community lot, or she can just pass next to your house sometimes. No big deal. I've heard ideas that if you have the painting of Bella at your house, she will appear on the lot. That's honestly probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard about Bella. Nothing like that happens, and I don't even know how it would. But okay, there's Bella Goth in Strangetown, but she's definitely not the same Bella as the one in Pleasant View. Technically, you can't have one sim in two neighborhoods at the same time. You would have to make a clone of that sim. How hard can it be? Well, apparently very hard, because the Strangetown Bella looks a lot different from the one in Pleasant View. This is the thing that bugs me the most. Some EA workers confirmed that it's supposed to be the same Bella. That the aliens just dropped her in Strangetown, or she was hiding there. But come on, even their voices are different. Yes, there are two adult female voices in this game. Never noticed? Just listen closely to your own sims and you'll hear it. I think there's only one male voice, though. Now I will talk a lot about the two versions of Bella, so to make it short and simple, I will call them P-Bella and S Bella. According to the game files, Bella was the second sim created in Pleasant View and the 19th sim created in Strangetown. It's probably not necessary, but I guess we can assume that P Bella was made before S Bella. 
On the other hand though, the one showed on the milk carton seems to resemble S Bella more. Plus, this Bella is way more accessible and visible in game. I think this could mean that S Bella is the archetype of her real looks. However, I find it kind of sad, as I prefer P Bella's looks. She is a bit more interesting than just a little modified first face template. Okay, she has a modified second template, but at least it's a bit more modified, let's say, and it just doesn't look as generic. Honestly, S Bella doesn't look very different from Brandy Broke in face features. But I know that the first face template is objectively better looking. Although, now that I think about it, Bella in The Sims 2 on PSP looks a lot more like P Bella. Well, I'm not so sure about that face archetype anymore, but I do have a huge theory not only on Bella's face, but also why Pleasant View was even created and why is this story like that. But for that we have to go all the way back to the beta version of The Sims 2, and this will be a big side note. Sorry. We have to take into account that a lot of things in The Sims 2 are just mistakes made by the developers or are a sign of the game being built for quite a while. In the game files you can find unofficial copies of Nervous Subject or Skip Broke, so those Sims were probably remade for some reason. Bella could have been a similar case. So do you remember those beta showcases? Even if you don't, you can still watch them. They are all over YouTube. There was Riverside, Waterside, everything was supposed to be different than it is in the final game. There were rumors about a fire in the office and remaking the game from scratch in like six months or something that were obviously untrue and made up because players just couldn't comprehend why the game is so different now. My point is that when you make something as big as a computer game, some ideas change in the process. Riverside has been recreated by fans based on what was showed in the beta presentations, and the idea itself is really good and I admire the work, but personally I don't find this neighborhood especially captivating. And Pleasant View, Strangetown and Veronaville have unique and interesting stories, don't they? It seems like they just wanted to spice things up a little bit and get more creative with the Sims backgrounds. There's another idea that maybe Riverside and Waterside were just test neighborhoods and Pleasant View had been planned before creating them. Because I kind of can't imagine that they wouldn't have thought of continuing the iconic goth family in the next generation of the Sims. I think they must have had this idea right at the very start of creating The Sims 2, right? That, that, that seems pretty obvious. When Pleasant View came along in the game development, they said that Bella would be playable in the goth family. Apparently they changed their minds not long before the game was released and decided to do this whole disappearance thing. Because without it, would Pleasant View even be fun to play? There are still the Pleasants, the Brokes, but without having this huge mystery in the back of your mind, would you still be as engaged in playing this town? But going back to Bella's face that sort of started this side note, Okay, in the recreated Riverside, we can see some sims with the first face template. But in the early beta display, I don't think we could actually see this face at all. Maybe I missed something, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the first appearance of the first face template I saw was from 2003, when the game's interface was already the final version, so most of the game mechanics must have been done already. And in the final game's create a sim, the model for hairstyles, makeups, and all that stuff is the second face template. It seems like at first the second face template was the basic one. That makes me think that maybe, just maybe, Pleasant View Bella's face was created before they created the first face template. And then they realized that it looked prettier, made Brandy broke, and then went to Strangetown and made the clone Bella with the first face template. They just decided that this version of Bella is better and should be treated as the original. Especially that the Pleasant View Bella is hidden, so you're not supposed to look at her from up close. But it's also important to note that within the game development, it's very likely that The Sims especially the basic sims, weren't even made in CAS. They could have been just coded. Even the looks of them could have been coded. So it's really hard to get to the bottom of that face thing. I guess I will never know what really happened. But as I like analyzing things, that was a nice thought process. 
After The Sims 2 was released, there were many things EAX has said, made or uploaded that were referring to Bella Goth. First, there's the interview with Bella from 2006. Then, Belladonna Cove, that was obviously inspired by Bella for some reason. After that, loads of easter eggs in The Sims 3. I won't even go too much into detail here, as you can very easily find that information, and simply because I think all those things were either done to fill in some holes that the creators made in this plot, or were supposed to make us think and get engaged in the gameplay again. Nothing more, in my opinion. So what's my conclusion? What was the actual idea behind Bella Goth? There's a popular Polish saying, if you don't know what it's about, it's about money. Polish people can be a bit greedy, unfortunately. Yes, I do think this whole thing with Bella was just a marketing move. A move that got a bit out of hand. It's funny to me how even people who have never played The Sims know about this story. And even Maxis themselves make fun of it. You know how there are those chance cards at work, right? At the top of the gamer career from Seasons, you may get a chance card that is about making a kind of dollhouse game. The dilemma is that a couple must be broken up and there are two ways of making that story. You can either involve aliens or do something else. If you choose aliens, there's a high chance of success. And if you choose something else, it may result in making the story with an open ending that the players should make themselves, which leads to the internet blowing up with ideas and thanks to that the game sells like crazy. Sound familiar? I think the creators themselves never really finished this idea. They don't have all the answers either and they were never meaning to have them. It was supposed to be our job to come up with the final story ourselves. And we did, in many different ways. And we're still continuing to do so. Even though they probably did that for the game to sell better, I don't think EA and Maxis thought it would be that much of a thing. They probably didn't even expect us to have access to the game files. And yet, we managed to find all the little mistakes that they made in the game and even included those in the story. The Sims community is truly impressive. That only proves how creative of a game we all play. So I hope you somehow enjoyed this ramble about Bella from the games and my own perspective and all that theory about the face. As always, thank you very much for watching and subscribe to the video and see you in the next one. Bye!